Hi, it's Mike at Cleveland Aircraft Tool. Today I'm coming to you from my home shop to talk about air compressors. What you see in front of you here is the California Air Tools air compressor, and it's the one that we use at Oshkosh, so we get a lot of questions about it. Um, why do we get a lot of questions about it? Because it's super, super quiet compared to most oilless air compressors. <laughs> So it uses a different style of compressor motor than most oilless compressors do. And because of that, they're able to um, make this one about 60 decibels, which is far quieter. I'm just checking that spec to make sure I'm saying it right. Um, yeah, about 60 decibels, which uh, is far quieter than any other air compressor. So if you go to, excuse me, any other oilless air compressor, so if you go to California Air Tools website, um, they actually have a video right on the front page that shows one of their compressors next to an equivalent oilless compressor. Um, they'll turn it on, turn it off, and then they'll turn the other one on, turn it off, and it's just, it's remarkable the difference. Uh, so that's why we like it. We have it sit under the table that we're doing demos with and uh, can talk to people just at a normal, normal volume. Um, the reason I have it on the table is to answer that question. It's California Air Tools, and specifically the model number, which people ask for, is the 8010. Um, the reason that we chose this one um, is the same as the reasons that I'm going to go through on what you need to be thinking about when you buy an air compressor. So we chose this one for portability to take to shows. Um, it makes 2.2 cubic feet a minute of air at 90 PSI has a, what is this, a eight gallon tank. So I can pick it up fairly easily, move it around, use 110 volts at um, eight and a half amps, which means I can run it um, on EA's power out in the middle of the field um, on a drop cord without any trouble. Um, a lot of the compressor you'll find will use a full 15 amps and then that blows the breakers usually when you get out in the middle of nowhere like that. So we chose this compressor mission specific for what we were doing with it for demos. Would I use this? I'm, I'm in my home, sh home shop by the way, so it might give you a clue of where I use it. Um, would we use this to build an airplane with? No. Um, and I'll go through why and what you should look for when you're choosing your air compressor. So we want to break this into a couple different parts here. First of all, um, what what power does it use? So this one uses 110 volts, standard um, plug-in. You can plug it into any circuit. In fact, we just moved into this house and I don't have it wired yet. Another reason why this is here. I uh, don't have it wired for 220 yet. So there is a single, the previous owner has a single 110 volt uh, breaker that services this um, two-car add-on garage. Um, so that's going to change eventually, but right now that's what I have is 15 amps and 110 volts. Um, so you need to know your power requirements. Uh, once I get 220 out here, I can do all kinds of different things, uh, but for now that's what I have. So another consideration is people that people don't think about when they're starting a project is they're probably going to finish it at a hangar at the airport if they're if they're like me and have a two-car garage that they're building in um, you're going to eventually move those parts and put them together in a hangar and um, it's nice to have that 110 volt um, compressor that you can just easily haul with you plug it in out there and you have your compressor versus having to buy another compressor um, at that point. So keep that in mind if that's a constraint you have in the hangar you're going to, or you think that will be a constraint. So anyway, three parts. First of all is the power. Uh, second of all is the tank size. And the third is the compressor itself. So we could have a 10 gallon tank, or I keep saying 10, this is eight, I think. Um, we could have a 10 gallon tank with a 13 CFM compressor on it. Um, not a problem. We could have this two CFM compressor on a 60 gallon tank, still not a problem. The difference is how long it takes to charge it, to the tank up, and how long it takes to deplete it before the compressor starts to run again. So if I had this 2.2 CFM compressor on a 60 gallon tank, I would plug it in and it would run and run and run and run and run, probably for half an hour to charge it up. 
Um, but then when I start using my tools, it's not going to run very often until the pressure gets down in the tank, kicks in, starts running, and it's going to take another half an hour to charge it up again. Um, so the CFM of your compressor in relation to the size of your tank, um, it's important just because of what you're doing with it and, and what you, the environment you want to, to uh, be in and the portability. So for most home builders, um, I would recommend a 20 to 30 gallon tank and a three to five CFM compressor. That's a good combination of the two where you'll have enough air that you're not waiting for the compressor. And I'll get into the specifics in a second here. But you, with three to five CFM at 90 PSI, I don't think I mentioned that, it has to be at 90 PSI, which is the way they're rated. Um, three to five PS, PSI at 90, no, three to five CFM at 90 PSI um, is what you need for the compressor um, for most home built projects. And then I would recommend the 20 gallon ish tank because it's something that two people can throw in the back of a pickup and take to the airport. So if you're wanting a bigger compressor, you know, um, sky's the limit in what you can get. Uh, for about five to six hundred dollars is what you should plan to spend for a good um, equip or appropriate size compressor, which again, this one is not it. This is just an example. So again, tank, compressor, and power source are the things that you need to be thinking about. Um, as far as CFM goes and the CFM rating, a lot, most of the time, compressors, including these, are rated by horsepower. There's a problem with that. Horsepower is a direct correlation to the number of watts that the compressor uses, the compressor motor and the um, compressor. It's, the, it's the, the power draw. So you can go to, uh, what's that tool shop? Uh, Harbor Freight and get a cheap, um, five horsepower, three horsepower, whatever, compressor. And you can put it right next to an, an industrial Ingersoll Rand compressor of the same horsepower. And the industrial uh, Ingersoll Rand will just completely outperform the cheaper one. And it's because of the efficiency of the motor, the efficiency of the compressor, all of those things. It just uses more power to do the same work. Uh, so ignore the horsepower ratings when you're shopping for these things and look at cubic feet a minute CFM. Um, the reason I say three to five CFM is because an air drill is probably, other if you're not painting with it, is pro, air drill is probably your highest consumption tool and they use about 11 CFM, but you're not holding the trigger down all the time. You, you have a 50% duty cycle or so, so that's five and a half CFM that it's actually using. So you have to consider that. Um, with this one, 2.2 CFM, uh, if I was using an air drill with this and I'm going fast enough between the holes, I'll notice the pressure drop and then I'll have to stop and wait for the tank to charge up a bit, which when we're doing demos, that shows um, that happens. Um, but it's a trade-off again because of the size that we wanted to travel with. So, um, Again, that's that's your highest CFM draw tool for the most part. If you're using a buffer or something like that, that's you know an impact wrench. Those are pretty abnormal use cases for building a metal airframe airplane. Um, the drill, again, 11 to 12 CFM. Uh, rivet gun, I don't recall exactly what the CFM of those are, but again, it's a duty cycle thing. So it's gonna use less than the drill. Let's just put it at that. So, I would expect actually this compressor to probably keep up with the rivet gun. By the time I'm putting the taking the Clico out, putting the rivet in the hole, covering it up, asking my bucker if they're ready, they say they're ready. I pull the trigger. I, you know, you're probably at a 10% duty cycle, so this is probably enough, um, unless you're just really going for it, um, like back riveting or something where you have all the rivets in place and you're able to just move from one to another. So again. You can get a tiny compressor on a big tank, so watch out for that. Um, you can get a big compressor, which doesn't even need a tank. Uh, if you had a 13 CFM compressor, you could run the drill all day long without a tank. Um, so just different 
different setups that you can get um, and different reasons to look for those. Um, so back to the California Tools uh, brand. So if you go to their website, you can click on, if, if you're interested in something this size, which again is not what I recommend for a home builder, but um, you can go to their website and click on the one horsepower. Again, they, rate, they show them in horsepower, but please don't look at that. Look at the PSI or uh, CFM at 90 PSI. Um, but, but if you click on the one horsepower, they'll show you a chart of all of their one horsepower machines. And then you can go and select your features, and this is what I ended up with. Um, and it's $214 at the time. I just Googled it to see what they cost now. Um, so at the time I'm doing this video, it's you know, a little over $200. Um, the one I would recommend, if you go into the two horsepower list and get this longer table, because there's a lot more configurations, um, it actually, they actually range from about the mid 500s to almost 2000, depending on what you're choosing. Um, so what I did is I went across here and I said, okay, I want it to run on 110 volts. And so that ends up to be a 14 amp draw at 110 volts. They do make exactly the same thing in a 220 that then pulls seven and a half. It's pretty small for my eyes. Um, they use they make uh, 70 decibels rather than 60, uh, so they're just a slightly bit louder. Um, and then they make them in 20 and 30 gallon tanks. The 20 gallon tank is $580. The 30 gallon tank I looked up was uh, somewhere between 12 and 1800, depending on the, the features. So I would choose the, the 20 gallon tank. The 10 gallons doesn't make that much difference to me. And as far as the weight goes, they were within 10 pounds of each other. Um, they both have steel tanks, so that's not a choice. And then they have an auto drain option, which is nice because I'm in a fairly humid environment. Um, Central Iowa, we get in the summer, we get high humidity. And so as you're compressing that air, the humidity falls out into the bottom of the tank. And if you don't remember to drain it, then your tank gets full of water. Um, starts spitting water through your tools and bad things happen. So having the auto drain that is every time you shut it off, it just it purges itself is a nice feature. Um, the reason that we don't sell our air compressors is another question that we get a lot. It's, it's all about uh, shipping and competition. So you can go to, you can get these air compressors at Home Depot. Lowe's doesn't stock them, but they'll ship them to you for free. Uh, Northern Tool, all those places um, to we would, we would have to buy a lot of them to be price competitive, and then we would have to ship them, which is expensive. Um, and so they're, they're just better set up to do that. So we, we send you to, the, to um, your local box store or order online, whatever, um, to get you the best value. So then what? Um, I mentioned that you need to look at the CFM at 90 PSI. So um, this, has gauges built into it and a regulator built onto it. Um, some have it off to the side, some you mount on the wall. You will need all of this stuff somewhere. Um, I'm, I just had another thought, so I'm backing up just a minute. So another thing that you can do is use an auxiliary tank. If you if you decide that you want a 20 gallon tank at home, but that doesn't seem like enough, it, you know, it runs too often. Um, you can get just another 20 gallon tank that doesn't have a compressor head on it. Um, I've seen those at farm stores and stuff for less than $100. Um, and you can just tee right into it. So make a fitting that has a, a, a tee. Uh, tee right into it and then you can leave that at home when you take your compressor out to the hangar. So um, that's another way to up your volume without having that huge 60 gallon tank sitting there. That's not what you're after. Um, so there's two gauges. One is telling you what's in the tank. Um, so that'll go up to usually about 120 PSI before the automatic uh, uh, switch will shut it off. And then you have a pressure gauge that shows what's coming out of your outlet. And so this is the one that you, you set at 90 PSI. That's what the air tools are designed to run at is 90. And then quick connect on here so you can unplug your hose. Uh, you'll need a hose, so when you buy your air compressor, buy a hose, and 
often they will come with fittings, um, but make sure. Uh, this particular hose I like because it's it's very flexible and it's not very big in diameter. You, if you're running a very long length, then you would want a larger diameter hose so you don't have pressure loss. Bernoulli thing. Um, but in a shop like this, all you need to do is usually get to the middle of the room. So that's that's how we have these set up. Um, so the hose plugs into the quick connect. The the female quick connect is on the um, the, either on the wall or on the compressor. The male quick connect is on this end of the hose, it plugs in. Then on the other end of the hose, I have a mini connector here. Um, most people would have the full size um, female connector on the end of their big hose. Uh, and then what we do is we offer, um, I, don't, I don't have a great, great example of this, but um, what we do is we offer a 10 foot long air hose, which has a female connector on one end and a male connector on the other end. And that gets, gets this heavier hose down on the floor. And then the smaller lightweight hose comes up to your hand. And so uh, you're not holding all the, the large coupler and the heavy chunk of hose up all the time. And then on my bench here, and another thing we offer is a deluxe air hose kit. So you can plug your heavier hose onto the bench, into this manifold, and then that's why I have these three, or these hoses, is because um, they have the mini connectors on both ends, and then you can have three whip hoses, they call them, or shorter hoses that are very lightweight, that come off of the bench and up to your tools. So it just keeps the tool lighter and more convenient. It's um, a more flexible hose. But it's a small diameter, so you wouldn't want to run this clear across the room. That's what the bigger hose is for. So I think that pretty much covers all of the things that I wanted to go over with air compressors, all of our common questions. Let me just look real quick. Um, there is a frequently asked questions um, written narrative that explains all of this on our website if you go into the learn section from our main page. Um, I talked about the size that we would recommend and why. Oh, one more thing. Um, this compressor has an inlet right here, which is a threaded pipe thread. Um, most, most compressors have that same type of inlet. And about 70, I believe it was 70% of your noise comes from this in inlet. Let me flip it on and we'll see if we can hear the change here. Just a sec. The difference? So if you don't care what your neighbors think, one thing you can do is put a connector in there, put a, a pipe connector in there and run that right outside elbow down so it doesn't get rained in and share the noise with your neighbors but not in your garage. So you can do that with any of the different sizes of air compressors and get rid of a lot of the noise that way. Another thing a lot of people do is they'll build a box around the compressor. Notice the cooling fins? Make sure you keep it cool. Don't build an insulated box that bakes your compressor. Um, but those are a couple things you can do to take the noise down uh, in your shop. So. I think that's about all I know about compressors. Um, we get an awful lot of questions and it's, uh, it's in that steep learning curve part of the build where you're having to make all these high stakes choices, you know, and don't want to do it wrong. So I, I completely understand that, but hopefully this helps a little bit about things that, um, things that you can look at, things that, um, uh, choices that you can make that are important to you so that you get the equipment that you need. So thanks a lot. Till next time.